This is the radial arm saw. The radial arm saw also cuts sticks of lumber like the miter saw. It can cut things like miters in other angles, but it requires a fair amount of setup and, and then restoring it back to the 90 degree cuts. And because it's quite complicated and involved, we tend not to do that here. If this was a tool that you were using for production of fine woodworking, you might be using all those tasks. But here we're just using it for cross cutting. And the difference between this saw and the miter saw is that it can cut a much wider strip of wood by coming out here all the way to the end of the table. But it can also cut your normal one by threes and other things. So it's going to do a lot of the same cuts as your miter saw. It might actually feel like this one's a little bit faster than the miter saw and easier to set up, especially for those 90 degree cuts. And it's a workhorse in the shop. Safety operating procedures are posted on the tool or next to the tool. These procedures represent the most important safety operations and considerations while using this tool or equipment, but are not intended to be comprehensive coverage of every possible use. For more complete safety instructions, please refer to the tool and equipment user manuals. Do not use this machine unless you have been instructed in its safe use and operations and you are complying with college and departmental shop safety guidelines and procedures. Safety glasses are required and must be worn at all times. All saws require safety glasses as minimum eye protection. Hearing protection is recommended. This tool does generate loud and high-pitched noise during operation. If you are using this saw repeatedly, you should wear ear protection. Long or loose hair, neckties, and loose or baggy clothing must be contained tie back or tie up hair, roll up long sleeves, tuck in your shirt. A dust mask or respirator may be required for some operations, especially when cutting materials that create a lot of fine dust, such as masonite or MDF materials. Rings, watches, and loose jewelry should not be worn. Gloves should not be worn while operating this tool. If they were to get caught in the blade, it could lead to serious injury. Pre-operational safety checks. Locate and ensure you are familiar with all machine operations and controls. Controls and adjustments may vary from tool to tool, particularly among different manufacturers of the same type of tool. The radial arm saw is very similar to the miter saw, but it has the advantage in that the saw head travels forward and can travel out and cut a much wider piece of wood. In fact, the cutting distance is a full 24 inches for this radial arm saw. Of course, that fact that that saw blade can come forward presents some other problems. If you're too aggressive with it, it can launch forward at you and come out of control. So that is why when you're pulling it, you need to be pulling it forward, but also getting ready to push back a little bit if it has any force that wants to launch out at you. So you're, you're pulling, but you're not just unconsciously pulling it forward. You've got you've to be ready to take it as slow as it needs to go and give it a little bit of pushback if it wants to launch out at you, because it's going to launch pretty fast if it catches on the wood. And with that in mind, you don't want to be directly behind it you don't want to uh, stand right in front of it. The preferred operation of this saw is that you operate with your left hand and that you hold the wood with your right hand so that I am on the right side of the saw blade as opposed to operating with the right hand and holding with the left hand. Now I'm right in front of the saw blade. It's not that you can't do that, it's just safer and preferred to operate with your left hand. The saw has some other adjustments here. There's a knob on this side that you can slide in and that limits the travel. Can't go out its full 24 inches. It can only go to where I stopped it. It's just you need to be aware of that in case someone adjusts it. Normally it's all the way out and it's not an issue. And then the other one is a knob on the other side of this saw, which you can't see right now, but you'll see in a minute, that locks the saw in place. That is to lock it in place so you can rotate the head, 
do other things that we don't really do with the radial arm saw. We use the radial arm saw for basically cross-cutting and cross-cutting uh, wide boards. On the flip side, this is the knob that controls the lock forward-backward. You'll probably never use it here, but you need to know about it in case it vibrates and rotates down and starts to drag on here and uh, impede the action. So you'll need to be able to loosen it up. And this is the stop that can be adjusted if you want to limit the travel of your saw. Now it only travels out part way. It doesn't go out all the way. Again, this is usually in the fully out position. You're probably not going to use it a whole lot. These other levers and things are for controlling the angle and other features. But you have to uh, raise the saw up. You have to change the angle. When you cut angles. You cut new holes in the, in the fence. And now you're replacing your fence more often. You're having to readjust this when you put it back down to 90 degrees. It's really not worth it when we have other tools in the shop that will do those features. So it's just really useful to have this as a single function saw even though it's got all these other features. There is a cable here attached to that uh, wheel in the back with this, it has a spring and that is what's pulling the saw back and it hits this rubber bumper and safely controls its uh, speed to the back. When you're bringing the saw back, you want to control that. You don't want to just let go. That's not good for the saw. Also on the saw, you'll notice that there are um, these leaf guards and they lift up as you travel across your wood and then will fall back down as you come past your wood. Those are our safety guards intended to remind you where the blade is and keep your fingers out of them. They should be functioning at all times. More features here. This will rotate the saw. You do that with the arm rotation and suddenly you're doing compound miters just like the, uh, uh, the compound uh, miter saw but uh, with greater travel and uh, able to work through higher and bigger pieces. The other control of the saw is this handle on the bottom, and that controls the lift up and down of the whole arm. Again, we don't normally adjust that a whole lot, and it's kind of locked in position because you have to go into the back and release a lock lever or a lock nut that's tightening on the whole uh, main column and keeps it in place and keeps it from drifting down or drifting up through normal vibration. This isn't attached. It will just come off. It will fall on the floor. It will go other places. Just put it back. That's where it belongs. And you can also put it down the other way if you want. I think yeah, it goes both ways. It's just there, one more function of the tool, so you are aware of it. The last safety feature of this that you should be aware of is the size of the table. And this is especially true if you're using your own radial arm saw at home or one that you get a hold of at another site. They often come from the factory, especially if you've got Craftsman radial arm saw from the 60s or 70s that has its own table. They make the table too short. So the, the rule with the table is that the blade should not extend past the front edge of the table at all because if that extends past the front edge of the table that's an exposure point where you can come into contact with the saw. Ensure the blade guard is present and properly functional. Adjust the guard if it hangs up or does not move freely. Do not operate if guards are missing or faulty. Check your workspaces and walkways to ensure that no slip or trip hazards are present. Pick up cut off scraps. Sweep up sawdust regularly. Keep the table and the work area clear of all tools, off cut lumber, and sawdust. Always use the dust collection system if the saw is attached to one. Operational safety checks. These are safety checks you must be aware of at all times while using the tool. And you must check them and perform them every time you use the tool on every single operation or cut. Always keep your hands away from the saw blade and the cutting head. Keep your hands and fingers at least six inches away from the blade and the blade path at all times. 
The workpiece must be held against the fence at all times while using the saw. Always allow the blade to come to maximum speed before proceeding with the cut. Never start the saw with the blade touching the material. Operate the saw with the left hand and hold the work with the right hand for the safest operation. Avoid reaching over the saw line. Do not cross your arms when cutting. If you do need to operate the saw with your right hand, keep the left hand, especially the thumb, well clear of the line of the cut. Do not cut small pieces. Keep your hands and fingers out of the six inch no-go zone. Return the cutting head to the rear of the table after each cut. Always control the action of returning the cutting head by guiding it carefully and slowly. When cutting bowed lumber, always place the convex edge against the fence. If you place the concave edge against the fence, the wood will shift as the saw cuts, causing the wood to bind on the blade. Before clearing waste and debris, switch the tool off and wait for the machine to come to a complete stop. Before making adjustments, switch the tool off and wait for the machine to come to a complete stop. We're gonna turn the saw on. The button here is on the front. The green button is go, the red button is stop. It's a noisy saw. Just by turning the saw on, the wood is vibrating, the table's vibrating, everything's vibrating, and the wood is coming away. So if I had that lined up, it's not lined up anymore. So hold it with your hand, turn the saw on. So you want to actually pull the saw all the way through the wood, past the wood, and then you want to control it going all the way back. You have to do that full control. That's basically it with that saw. There's not much more to it. You can cut wider boards. This piece we're just going to chop up. Again, I can cut with my right hand and hold with my left. With the miter saw, do not reach in there and take your scraps out until the saw has come to a complete stop. Once it is stopped, then you can reach in and get your tool, uh, your scrap pieces. And you can deposit them directly into the trash can, which will be sitting here most of the time. If we wanted to cut a bigger board, we could do that. You can cut wider boards. With it. If you're impatient, you can knock the piece of wood out of the way and then you can grab it, but don't reach in there. Same thing as the miter saw, a six inch no-go zone. Six inches is about the distance from your pinky to your thumb for most average sized hand. So that's the distance. Don't, ha don't put your hand in there. Don't be holding in there while you're operating the, the saw. We can cut plywood too. Just be aware that um, as you're pulling stuff out, if a chunk of wood happened to go flying in there and caught the blade, this whole thing could launch forward at you and I'm no longer holding it. So that's why you wanna stay clear of there while the blade's spinning down. You notice on that one, it was very, very noisy and that is indicative of this blade being dull and chipped with buildup of pitch and gum from the sap. So I need to replace the blade and put on a new one. I'll take a video of that while I do that. So we have a, a video of how to change the blade. There you go, radial arm saw. If I let the sawdust build up in the radial arm saw, it's going to create some interference with me uh, getting accurate cuts. And as I try to put this up there, 
you can see all this sawdust in here is causing it to protrude away from the fence. That means I am not going to get a good 90 degree cut. So clean this out regularly. Get this debris out of here, vacuum it, do whatever it takes to get this to be free and clear. And now I can put my board up there and it's nice and tight up against the fence. Exactly like I like it to be. No obstructions. Here's an example of a board that has a slight bow to it. I can push that in, but I, I've got a little bit of a gap here. And what's going to happen if I cut that piece is those two pieces are going to pinch together. And that can bind on the blade and do all kinds of things dangerous and throw the wood back at you, cause the saw to bind, cause the saw to kick, all kinds of stuff. Just flip the board over and that gap is gone. The temptation is to say, well, I can't get it flush here, but I really need that cut to be right where I've got it. I need that cut right there. Better line than that because you draw a straight line. The temptation is to block this out somehow so that I am flush here and here but that's dangerous because I'm not supported right here at the at the center of the cut where I need it to be so don't don't do this 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 is very very bad if I need to make this cut and it's got a bow flip it over and cut it here it's still going to be the same cut and it's going to slightly bow this way but it's going to be flush right here and it's going to be 90 degrees right there it may your board may bend by the time it gets out here or it may bend over there but our cut is going to be accurate if we cut this way if we cut the other way and we try to block it out or do anything of that nature it's going to be dangerous and our cut isn't going to be accurate here's another example of the bow in the lumber I'm flush over here, I'm away from the fence here, and I'm flush over there. Again, the temptation is to try to block it away from here so that I can be flush. But the correct answer is to rotate it so that the convex edge and not the concave edge is touching. These are potential hazards to be aware of while operating this tool. The cutting head of the saw may crawl, walk, or kick back toward the operator. Always maintain control of the cutting head. This is a cutting tool, so it will be expelling flying chips and sawdust. Chips and sawdust can be propelled at high speeds and cause injury to exposed skin. Always wear protective clothing and PPE. When this tool is in operation, the blade is exposed, presenting a potential point of contact for injury. Always be aware of where the blade is and keep yourself and others away from the blade. Flying chips and sawdust could cause eye injuries. Always wear safety glasses while using this tool. Noise levels can rise above 100 decibels. Protect your ears by wearing hearing protection while using this tool. Do not use faulty equipment. If something is not working properly or if you suspect something is wrong with the tool or machine, Please report this to your instructor and or to the ANL technical director. Do not cut branches or irregular lumber. Do not cut metal. Do not use the saw if the blade travels beyond the edge of the table. Do not freehand cut. You must always place the wood flat and secure against the fence. As a note of safety, you don't want to cut multiple pieces of wood at the same time on the miter saw or the radial arm saw or the sliding compound miter saw. It's not safe. It's too easy for the pieces to shift around. You're not going to get accurate cuts and it's just dangerous. 
Housekeeping. Turn off the machine and return all guards to fully closed positions. Stay with the machine until the blade comes to a complete stop. Remove any cutting stops or jigs. Leave the saw ready for use by the next person. Leave the machine and counter in a safe, clean, and tidy state. Put away off-cut lumber. Toss scraps into the trash bins. Sweep and dust off the counter, the machine, and the floor. When using the radial arm saw, you want this dust collector to be active. So I'll go ahead and flip that switch on. And it just sucked in all the dust and dirt that I was just using on my cups. Dust off the entire counter, making sure you get all the sawdust out of the cracks and all of the surface of this. In fact, you want to get the dirt out of the cracks while you're using it because this dirt will build up and will make your cuts inaccurate. Dust off back here. Dust off back here. Blow some compressed air into the tool. Get all the dust out of there. Blow the dust out in the back um, and uh, vacuum and dust out of here. And then sweep and vacuum and dust underneath because there's lots of sawdust that builds up down here as well as pulling the rugs out and sweeping and vacuuming underneath there.